All right, children over 30, today we're going to talk about rockering and rockerable frames. So the first one we're going to talk about, the most obvious one, the one that comes stock on the most skates, is your flat rocker. So yeah, flat rocker's great. Um, all the wheels touch the ground, which is super good for going extra fast. They do turn a little bit better than like an anti-rocker setup, not nearly as well as really any other rocker out there but again it is going to be the fastest so if you're into just going fast and taking corners real well and stuff like that flat rocker is your way to go the next most popular rocker that we have as seen on my beautiful fucking trs tresseter fucking trendsetters is the anti-rocker and you can't see it too well the music stand because it's black but there are two tiny plastic wheels here and here. And those aid with doing the slides and the grinds and stuff that happen right here on skates. And then of course you have some bigger wheels, bigger wheels. These are I think 58s that I have on the outside. As far as going fast and turning and all that, this sucks for that. Like it's hard even to get a good slalom happening with an anti-rocker setup. I mean, it can be done, but again, it's a pain in the ass. So if you're super into grinding and really just super into grinding or really doing half pipes and stuff, I think Jaron Grobe still rocks an anti-rocker, which is odd because I would figure him for a flat rocker dude and all the ramps and shit that he skates. But anyway, these are gonna be good for that. And they probably have the most stability, um, being the hardest to turn in you're going to feel the most secure going up and down ramps. So that is a positive. So the next rocker is sort of the opposite of the anti-rocker. Um, it's known as the full rocker or the slalom rocker or the banana rocker. Traditionally, this is achieved by having, say, 80 millimeter wheels on the inside and 76 millimeter wheels on the outside, or 76 and 72. There's a four millimeter diameter difference traditionally between the inner and outer wheels um, and this can be achieved on rockable frames by taking the back one and the front one and rocking them straight up and then the middle one straight down on every rockable frame i'm aware of this will give you a two millimeter difference the cool thing about rockable frames though well the the shitty part about that rocker is that it sucks for just skating around it's awesome for turning and stuff like that. It's the best for turning. It's amazing for turning. But for anything else that happens on skates, like it sucks. I mean, even once you get like comfortable with it, it sucks. And it gets better once they wear in a little bit. But the cool thing is if you have rockable frames, you don't have to have a two millimeter difference between the outside and the inside. So these are all 80s and you can see I have the back one a little bit higher, so this is more representative of like the two millimeter difference. It's pretty high. You gotta lean a good deal back to get that rocker. But the front is just, I mean, these are six-way rocker bulls, so I think it's like forward and down. Um, and you can see there's barely any lean at all there. That's just a nice, it's a nice little baby rocker. So personally, if I was mostly into slalom and stuff, but I also liked to skate around um, and not be confined to whatever parking garage I set up my cones in, I would probably opt for something like this. Just a little baby rocker. It's, it's adorable. The high-low rocker, unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate. I think traditionally they came in hockey skates and it was like 80, 80, 76, 76. The frames themselves, the bolts would be offset, so they would all touch, but it would be like a forward lean. And the idea with that was just to keep you on your toes, you know, constantly because roller hockey, you got to start and stop and start and stop and start and stop. Like that's the half of your experience is just uh, trying to go fast from basically a dead start or trying to turn really fast and then trying to go really fast from basically a, a dead stop. And I, I don't really see anybody use it outside of that. So there's that. The last rocker, my personal favorite, as seen on my beautiful fucking K2 Midtowns with the Kaiser Aero frames and the undercover wheels, is the natural rocker. And this thing is amazing. It's a combination of, it's a slight front rocker, 
and there's a little bit of an oblong kind of banana slalom thing to it, a very slight one. If you lean back, oh, those three roll, and the front's off the ground just a little bit, back off the ground just a little bit, front off the ground just a little bit. It's, it defies science, but it's it's great. This is it's completely awesome. I feel completely comfortable going up and down ramps in it, and jumping off shit in it. You know, it's not quite as secure as my anti rocker setup, but it's way the hell more secure than any sort of like slalom banana rocker. You can turn really really well. There's a couple ways that you can achieve this. One is by when you rotate your wheels, just flip them around to the opposite side instead of doing the one three two four thing with the opposite escape. Um, if you're paranoid about one of your feet wearing down wheels faster than the other, you can also swap into the other skate. But the idea is you keep the first wheel in the first position and the second wheel in the second position, and you're just sort of rotating them to put the fresher side on the side that's going to be worn down from that point on. There's also the wizard frame, which I can't afford. Uh, I would have probably all of them, the 90, the 100, and the 110, if I could afford them because I can see merits to all of them, uh, but I can't. So again, the wizard frame is going to be a little bit of a high-low rocker and uh, just a slight kind of banana to it. And when you lean forward, your front three wheels are down. And when you lean back, your back three wheels are down. And that's where the magic happens. So unfortunately, man, I tried for a long time to make the natural rocker work on this K2 rockerable frame. And it, it never really came to fruition. And I think the problem is, because in theory, it should totally work. So six-way rockerable, so you figure inside and outside. The bottom point is two millimeters lower than the top point. The middle point is going to be right in the middle, so a millimeter from the top, a millimeter from the bottom. And then the top is going to be two millimeters from the bottom or a millimeter from the middle point. So in theory, a natural rocker should be no problem for this. You take the first wheel and you stick it up and you take the second one and you put it you know, forward a little bit and then you take the third one and you put it down the most and then you take the fourth one in the back and you put it basically the same as the second wheel but facing the opposite direction. And I think the problem is, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So this is the rocker and a K2 frame. And you can see that the hole isn't really centered at the points of the hexagon. It's centered at the flat head part things of the hexagon. Let me show you again so you can see what I mean. If I could turn it just right. Yeah, there we go. So you can see it's not centered at the point that's straight up right now. It's centered at the left side kind of deal. And I think that's re what's really fucking with the design because there's no reason like in a hexagon like it makes logical sense that you know one millimeter one millimeter one millimeter you know what I'm saying and the only reason that I can figure out that it's not working on this frame is because it's centered on the flat parts instead of on the points and when it's centered on the flat parts you know the part that goes you know to the side to down and the same thing like this side up to straight up just isn't equal distant in a way that translates to a frame that's perfectly rockerable. So I would really like to see like a rhombus rocker or I mean a diamond, you know, just a square turned this way. So we'll say here is flat, here's a millimeter up, here's flat and forward, say a millimeter, whatever. And then here is down a millimeter from the center. That really makes a lot of sense to me. And I think structurally, it would be a little bit stronger of a shape than a hexagon. I don't think people really have a lot of problems with bearing spacers or rockers um, rotating within the outer outside thing, but it couldn't hurt to make it a little bit stronger. And I think it would be less confusing to the people using it. You could even get like a full, full high-low rocker with that if you through a 76 millimeter wheel into the equation. Other than that, there's a couple more rockers. Um, there's flat, but with the front wheel up a little bit, either with a smaller wheel or with rockering, um, there's the same thing in the back. I messed around with the front rocker for a little bit. Once you get a natural rocker, there's really no reason to try for a front rocker or a back rocker. It's just, 
a less effective way at accomplishing the same thing. Essentially, whenever you narrow your wheelbase, you're going to get a tighter turning radius. And by having a smaller front wheel, that accomplishes that. Um, but again, for just skating around, like it sucks. Like you get wheel wobble if you even start to go fast. That lean forward to the front position sucks. Just, just don't do it. Get a rockerable frame or wear your wheels down or something, but uh, front rocker is not the answer. All right, later.